Did you know that 87% of data science projects never make it into production? That's just one out of every 10 AI projects. So how do you make sure your project does not become one of those 87%? I'm Priyanka Vargaria, and in this video, I will walk you through steps to operationalize your machine learning workflow using Vertex Pipelines, so your project becomes one of those 10 successful AI projects. We will look at MLOps framework and Vertex AI Pipelines, which helps you break down the complex multi-step ML workflow into a pipeline and ensure that each step runs in a reproducible, auditable, cost-effective, and a scalable way. In contrast with typical software systems, which are traditionally code-centric, ML systems involve an intricate relationship between data, code and the models. Now, data and models are unique artifacts with their own dependencies and pitfalls. And the joint management of these three artifacts is a challenge in delivering and maintaining production machine learning systems. That is what MLOps is. MLOps is a culture and practice that aims to unify ML system development and operations and guide through the challenges of taking ML projects from experimentation to production. It is just like DevOps, but for ML, hence MLOps, which handles managing the life cycle of data, models, and code. Let's start with a high-level MLOps framework. So the first step is ML development, which is inherently experimental, where data scientists and model builders explore and transform the data sets, explore different algorithms, train many models, and then compare them. Then the second step is continuous training. Now, production training should be automatable and repeatable so it can take new data or other triggers and generate new and better models on demand. And then the third step is model deployment, which is really all about continuous integration and continuous delivery. This involves running A-B tests, evaluation of model behavior in production, and then approving them for releasing following a rigorous, auditable, and even reversible CI-CD process. And then lastly, it's continuous monitoring. You need to continuously monitor your models when they are running in production um, because you want to get a sense of how they are performing. This is important to ensure the quality and business continuity, but also crucial for getting high quality signals into how to improve a model for your next iteration. Model management and governance is basically the step that applies to all of these steps. It's the, it's the entire framework. We need traceability, verifiability, and auditability at each stage of this workflow. ML Pipeline models this MLOps workflow. A pipeline is a way of modeling a workflow as a set of connected steps. Each step takes as input the output of the previous step and performs some additional computations and then produces outputs that can be utilized by the future components. Now here in this MLOps workflow, to keep the spirit of experimentation in the ML development phase, we recommend using the reusable training pipelines. And the reason for reusable pipelines is because the data scientists can share components amongst themselves. So they don't have to start with a blinking cursor and to rerun and iterate quickly to create those optimal models. The output of this step would be the trained pipeline source code, which you feed into the continuous training phase. The pipeline generates uh, generated earlier can be now treated like a software application and is version controlled and deployed through CI-CD process as a training pipeline that can now be invoked with new data or parameters in production as needed. Now, the output of this step would be your trained model. And then the output of the model deployment is your live predictions. And these predictions can um, not, not just be predictions, but also logs and other records of production inferences. 
Now the output of continuous monitoring, because you are monitoring um, the train the model continuously, the output of this continuous monitoring is those alerts that go out to the team so that they can continuously um, measure and monitor what the model's performance is looking like. Is it degrading or triggering rollbacks and retaining A-B testing of any candidate models? The model management and governance capabilities, obviously, as I said earlier, span across the entire framework, including the features such as model registry, model approvals, and model provenance. Now, what are Vertex Pipelines? Vertex Pipelines help you automate and monitor your ML systems by orchestrating this ML ops workflow in a serverless manner. They are based on containers, which help you make the ML ops process uh, really portable and scalable. And the Vertex Pipelines store the workflow artifacts using Vertex AI ML metadata, which makes it easier to analyze the lineage of our workflow and the items that are being created. For example, an ML model's lineage may include training data, the hyperparameters, and the code that we use to create the models, which are critical pieces of information to understand the changes in performance or accuracy of our ML systems. Now, as you can imagine, managing this metadata by yourself in an ad hoc manner can be difficult and time consuming, and Vertex Pipelines makes it easy to do that. Now, Vertex Pipelines support both Kubeflow Pipelines and also TensorFlow Extended. Now, if you are already using TensorFlow, TensorFlow Extended is a good choice for you. It provides a rich set of components that helps you take the TensorFlow code and make it into an ML pipeline. I did a video on TFX not too long ago, which I will include in the description below. Now, if you're not using TensorFlow, then use a KFP, which is an open source machine learning pipeline. It offers a great deal of flexibility. It's easy to plug in code from any ML framework, including the ML frameworks that aren't Python based, such as Apache MXNet. Now, you might ask, why do I need Vertex Pipelines if I use Kubeflow Pipelines already today? Now, the biggest reason is that it is managed. And because it is managed, you don't have to maintain or create servers by yourself. Now, when you're using KFP, you need to build, scale, and maintain a Kubernetes cluster all by yourself. But with managed pipelines, we don't have to do any of that work. It's all serverless. OK, so in this video, we got a quick overview of ML Ops workflow and Vertex pipelines. What's next? Let's take a look at Vertex Pipeline's demo in our next video. In the meantime, try out the code lab linked below and subscribe to get notified about the next video.